My heart has no desire to stay where thou arise and fears this man. So some may dwell where these abound. My prayer and hang in higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on him, then save land, a higher plan than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high, your ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan stars and me are hurled. For faith has called the joyful sound, the song sings sings on high your ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on him, then saber land, a higher plan than I have found. Lord, lift my feet on high, your ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on him and save land. A higher plan than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high your ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on him. Van Saber land, a higher plan than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high your ground. Amen. Amen. Let us bow. Oh, gracious God, our Father in heaven. Father, we come before you this morning with joy in our hearts. Amen. And thanks on our lips. Father, I want to thank you for opening our eyes to see this day, a day that your word said was created for us to rejoice in it and to continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for Johnny Mercy, for those of us who are in the building, and for the ability for those who are probably watching this in their various devices at home. Father, we thank you for our extended family beyond the borders of the United States who are also locked in at this moment. We pray, our prayers, all of us, is that you open our hearts, you grant us enough understanding so that as we listen to the teaching this morning from your gospel, Father, we will be able to grab as much as possible. And Father, that the ability to go around and teach the same message will be our portion in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I want to pray for those who are sick, who are unable to attend this service today. Father, we pray that your healing powers will be their portion in Jesus' name this day. Father, I want to thank you for everything, and we we'll continue to thank you for our preacher, Brother Hare, who stands before us day in, day out, to bring the good news to us and to teach us in a way that everyone can understand. Father, we thank you, and we continue to pray and ask all this. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning, good morning, and good morning, and welcome <coughs> to the Rock Springs Road Congregation of the Lord's Church that meets right here at 6481 Rock Springs Road in Stonecrest, Georgia, where the word of God is preached and we stand on what thus says the Lord. 
we encourage you to be as the Bereans. And the Bible says in Acts 17 and 11 that these were more noble than those at Thessalonica. Why? Because they received the word of God with all readiness of mind, and they searched the scriptures daily to make sure the things they were being taught were what thus says the Lord. And then we always add that extra caveat, and that caveat is that we are to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. As we continue our study in the book of Revelation, we're addressing the last letter to the last church, and that was the church at Laodicea. On Wednesday, <coughs> we uh, entertained a question about what about them? And I'll address those as we work our way in through our study uh, of the book of Revelation and the church specifically at Laodicea. We open by addressing what God expects. What does God expect from us even in hard times? What does God expect from us even in hard times? When things are difficult, uh, what does God expect from me? And so we address the fact that what God expects from us, even in hard times, one, is commitment. Two, is faithfulness. Regardless of what's going on in your life, God expects two things from you all the time. One is commitment. The other is faithfulness. And remember those four C's, convinced, converted, convicted, and committed. In other words, commitment is the addressing of all that preceded before it. So without that, you have a difficult time pleasing God. So what God expects, even in hard times, one, commitment, two, faithfulness. The questions that we were going to address and will address as we study uh, the last letter to the last congregation, the question that we'll be addressing is, one, how do you worship through a pandemic? How do you worship through a pandemic? Jesus introduced himself to the church at Laodicea. That pandemic that they were going through, God identified them as wretched, one, and miserable, number two. Uh, pandemics, in other words, it's spreading throughout the church. In other words, uh, as COVID-19 has spread it across the world and around the world, uh, the wretchedness of people and the wickedness and the them being miserable in their state is a pandemic. <clears throat> and then next, how do you worship through unemployment? Remember, Jesus identified them. They said they were rich, but God said they were what? Poor. So how do you worship God through unemployment? Third, how do you worship through sickness? Sickness. And sickness can be addressed in so many different ways. Jesus identified their sickness as a blindness. In other words, they had a major medical school there, and they, they had uh, created a salve, that you would, an ointment that you would put on your eyes, and it would help correct your vision, blindness, and, and that type of thing. But God is saying that you are blind if you don't see salvation in him. So we'll be talking about that sickness. And then the last was, how do you worship through the storm? How do you worship through a storm? Um, uh, remember, there was a song years ago, um, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid. Oh, Lord. That their storm. Do you <laughs> Thank you. How do you worship through a storm? Jesus identified their storm as being naked. They are naked. Uh, I can, can you imagine yourself in a storm, naked or naked in a storm, and you have no control over what's going on around you? So we will address all those as we continue our study in the, uh, the book of Revelation. <clears throat> when we stopped on Wednesday night, uh, I, I, I left you with some scriptures on the wall, one hanging from the ceiling, and a couple of scriptures on the table. I want to identify those scriptures before we start our study this morning. 
Do anyone remember, as anyone recall, what were the two scriptures or what, what are the scriptures on the wall? We said there were scriptures on the wall. Sister Blyler. On the wall, we had 2 Thessalonians 1.8. All right, we have 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Revelations 20.12. Tw Revelations 20.12. On the table, we had Romans 1.20. And on the table, we had Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Matthew 22:29, Romans 2:12 through 16. Romans 2:12 through 16. And on the ceiling. On the ceiling. Romans 10:14. 10:14. All right. Now we're going <coughs> to address those as we go through. Did anyone discover anything before I start? Did anyone discover anything with your study of the of the wall, the ceiling, and the table? Yes, ma'am. Well, in general. In connection to the question, mm -hmm. um, I came across, and, and I, this kind of making a question for me, mm -hmm. Genesis 18.25. All right, in Genesis 18.25, Sister Blyler said in answering the question, in studying the question, and remember what the question was. Anybody remember what, mm -hmm. before we go to Genesis 18.25, what was the question? What about the people who never knew or heard the name Jesus? What about the them? What about the people that never heard the name Jesus? What about them, people that never heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ? What about them, those who had never experienced, never heard, nor were taught spirituality, never knew anything about Christianity, don't know anything, never heard anything about the one Lord, the one faith, or the one church, never ever saw, touched, held, handled or knew anything about a Bible, let alone the Old Testament or the New Testament. So the question was wrapped up in that. In other words, what about them? So when I talk about them, I'm not talking about those that rejected Christ. I'm not talking about those who have an opportunity to respond to the gospel. I'm not talking about those who knew the gospel and left. I'm not talking about those who have access to the gospel every day. I'm talking about them that group of them that have never heard the name Jesus, number one, never heard or experienced and never been taught or presented the gospel of Jesus Christ, number two, never knew anything about spirituality, Christianity, the one Lord, the one faith, the one church, never knew anything about that, don't know anything about the Bible, let alone the Old Testament or the New Testament. So when I talk about them, I'm not talking about non-Christians. When I talk about them, I'm not talking about those that rejected Christ. When I talk about them, I'm not talking about those who left the faith. And that's why some scriptures will be applicable and some will not be. So that's why we start sifting through on Wednesday night. Very good, Sister Blyler. It's always great to have a Bible student in a Bible class. It, it, ju it just helps so well. Now. In order to answer the question, remember Solomon said, hear, the, hear, hear what? Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. And when I answer a question, I, I, don't, I don't too particularly care for raising a question. So when I answer a question, I answer it and I close that door on that. We make it thorough. We hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So in order to answer the question, what about them? Let me give you the historical setting from book chapter and verse and for those of you that are listening in and was following since Wednesday night you need your paper and pencil you need your Bible because we're going to identify some specifics we're going to address these specifics as we go and I need to leave you in a position where when the question is asked of you what about them you can answer the question knowing what the Bible has to say and being able to give people book, chapter, and verse for the position that you hold. Now, let me start by saying there is no solution. There is no solution to human sin apart from the atoning death of Jesus Christ. So nobody can be saved. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're illiterate, I don't care if you if you dumb, crazy and otherwise, I don't care if you never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care if you never saw the Bible, the word of God. Understand this premise that every Christian needs to understand and be able to put their foot on this statement. There is no solution to human sin apart from the atoning death 
of Jesus Christ. So without the death of Jesus Christ, there is no remission of sin. Without shedding of his blood, there is no remission of sin. Without his coming, dying for the world, dying for the sins of the world, there is no atonement apart from the atoning death of Jesus Christ. In saying that, all persons, I need you to understand this. So we're not giving anybody a pass or an escape clause. Well, what about them? I need you to understand in answering the big question about what about them, all persons are sinful. Understand that. Whether or not they have heard the word or not, you are still in sin. Can I get a witness with that? Uh, because the Bible says all have what? Sin, fallen short of the glory of God. We were separated uh, from any hope, and we were, we, were, we were without God in the world. So I need you to understand that, first of all, all persons are sinful whether or not they have heard the word. So you're not lost whether or not you have heard the word. That does not uh, cause you to be lost because you didn't hear the word. Number two, second, they are separated from God. That's what sin does. Sin does what? It separates us from God. I don't care who you are, where you are, whether you heard the word of God, whether you have access to a Bible or not, whether you even heard the name Jesus or not, that has nothing to do with the big picture that what? Sin separates us from God. So if you're in sin, you are automatically what? Separated from God. And Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. So we understand that second premise. We find that in Isaiah 59 and verse 2, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 through 31. And then third, we have, uh, 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 we are morally guilty. In other words, our, 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 our morality, our moral character will condemn us. We are guilty before him and in need of his forgiveness. So, part, so apart, rather, apart from the atoning blood of Christ, there is no other provisions made for a man to be saved. Watch what I said. Apart from the atoning death of Jesus Christ, there is absolutely, there's just not any other provisions made for a man to be saved. The only provision that's been made and put in play for a man to be saved is because and through the death of Jesus Christ. So we first established the premise that is Christ and Christ alone. It's through his death and his death alone. It's through his shedding of his blood. It's for him giving his life on Calvary. Christ died for our sins that we may die to our sins. Keep that in mind as we continue to progress. At any time, stop me, ask questions. That's inside or out. Jesus began his message to the church at Laodicea by describing himself as the amen. And remember, we said the word amen simply means truth. I'm in agreement. In other words, that's right. That's correct. So when you say amen, you're just simply agreeing with, quote, the truth. And Jesus said, I am truth. Let my word be truth. In other words, so when we identify with the amen, Jesus is saying, I don't care what you say. What I say is the truth. They said they were rich. Jesus said they were what? Poor. They thought they were comfortable and well-doing. God described them as wretched and miserable, uh, 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 blind and naked. All right, so the Laodiceans said they were rich, but Jesus said they were poor. Who's right? Jesus of the layout of sins. If he, Jesus, is the amen, then Jesus is going to be right each and every time. Jesus is the truth. They are both, being the layout of sins, wretched, they're miserable, they're poor, they're blind, and they're naked. 
These are the diseases. These are the sicknesses. These are the unemployment situations. These are the conditions through which hard times we will address. What does God expect from us in hard times? It is of vital importance that we consider our lives from Jesus' perspective. I need you to understand, during our study with the book of Laodicea, we're going to bring in all these other qualities, but I need you to look at yourself. The Bible says what? Examine who? Yourself and see if you are where? In the faith. And then he says what? Prove it. So it is vital. It is a vital uh, importance that we consider our lives from Jesus perspective not from comparing ourselves with others the problem with Laodicea they had gotten comfortable so they were com comparing themselves with others how is it possible for a church to be comfortable in the midst of a persecution of saints that are standing for the word of God tell me that how can it be possible for a church to be comfortable in the presence of persecution against those that are standing for the word of God. The only way they can stand, the only way they can be comfortable is that they're not being what? Persecuted. And the only reason they're not being persecuted is because what? They are not standing with the word of God. You can't stand with the word of God and not get some, oh, some rejection, some, some curl eyebrows or something. Something will happen. Ask yourself, will God judge them and those without Jesus Christ? Listen to the question. Ask yourself, how will God judge them? Talking about the, the Laodiceans here. And those, talking about those that have not heard, accepted, or received not knowledgeable of the word of God. How is God going to judge them? How? Talk to me. How is God going to judge them? What was that? According. See, you didn't know it, but you, what you said, accordingly. God is going to judge them accordingly. Now, I want you to write the word accordingly down because accordingly is going to come back and slap you three or four times going to slap you this morning accordingly all right God is going to judge you accordingly all right quote to what according now follow and follow that accordingly with a dash or a blank because you're going to have to fill that in say it say again all right put in your first blank accordingly put by works put by works God this this is too good <clears throat> Y'all, y'all better than I thought you were going to be. All right. All right. Uh, accordingly, in that first blank, put works. And then he's going to judge us according to. You yet said something, Brother Sona? Deeds. All right. All right. Make a, make a slot for deeds, even though deeds and work can go hand in hand. But we're going to do works, and then we're going to do deeds. All right. Works and deeds. Come on, there's four other blanks. All right, works is one, deeds can be two. Okay, that, that would tie with works and deeds. Say again from outside. Faithfulness. What do you say? Faithfulness. Um, okay. Okay. Put, put faithfulness and commitment together since I started off with that. Put faithfulness slash commitment in that slot. We got work. We got deeds. We got faithfulness slash commitment. How is God going to judge us? According to what? Uh, all right, scripture. All right, and that next blank put scripture. So I got work. I got deeds. I have what? Uh commitment slash faithfulness and then scripture that uh, what is written is uh, scripture all right obedience will be faithfulness all right so you can just put in parentheses behind faithfulness you can put uh, uh, obedience there so it'll register give me one more all right works deeds would be would be that 
All right, so we have first blank. We got works, we have deeds, and then we have what? Commitment slash faith. Then we have what? Scripture. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, contentment. Uh, nope. Hmm? Okay, that would be encompassed with commitment and faithfulness. We'll put group all that together. Give me one more biggie for that last blank. First blank is work. Second blank was deeds. Third blank is commitment slash faithfulness. Fourth blank is what? Scripture. That fifth blank is going to be what? Right in that fifth blank, you're going to have three things in that fifth blank. What I, I tell you what, uh, put put the word revelation there. Put in that fifth blank. Put the word revelation, <coughs> or it's how God reveals Himself will be judged based on how God revealed himself and then whether or not you accepted the revelation. And how he reveals himself is through nature, write it down, nature, consciousness, nature is, and then consciousness, Knowledge, nature, consciousness, knowledge. Now let's 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 go back over those. The first blank we got what works. Help me out. Second blank we got what deeds. Third blank we got what commitment slash faithfulness. Fourth blank we have what scripture, and in the third blank we have what revelation. And we said revelation is how God reveals himself. And we said God reveals himself through nature, through consciousness, and knowledge. All right? Write those down. All right? <coughs> Everybody with me so far? All right? So what about them? The question, my brother over here with his hand up, is asking the question, all right? And what question is he asking? He's asking, what about them? He wants to know, what about them? What them? The them that never heard the name Jesus. What them? The them that never uh, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. What them? The them that don't know anything about spirituality, salvation, Never heard anything about what? The Bible. Never heard, read, studied, had access to the Bible, the Word of God. And without knowing nothing about what the Old or the New Testament. So what about them? My brother is raising his hand. He's asking the question, what about them? You need to understand about them and everybody else. See, God's Word is inclusive, but yet it is also exclusive to the point, you just have to know when and where and how. So all will be judged by what? By all will be judged, but by what standard will God use? We have one, we have what? Blanks, we have what? Worked, we have deeds, we have what? We have commitment slash faithfulness, then we have what? Scripture, then we have what? Revelation. And we said the revelation, God reveals himself in, in nature, through consciousness, and through knowledge. All right, keep that in mind as we go through. All will be judged by, but by what standard will God use? God has a standard. We know all people, watch this now, whether you heard the gospel or not, whether you have access to the Bible or not, whether you heard the name of Jesus or not, 
all people will be judged but by what standard? We know all people are without what? Excuse before God. Since the scriptures tell us that the knowledge of God or that the knowledge of God and the knowledge of of sufficient moral responsibility can be seen in creation as well as known in your heart. Remember I said that God reveals to us through what? Creation. And you can know why because there are some things God has implanted in you. It's innate that you know what? Right from wrong. That's implanted in you. Yes, ma'am. So what you're saying that anybody that has breath in their body, that can look up in the sky, look around, see the sun, the moon, the trees, right there, they should know. There's God. There, God. There's something powerful. Uh, you may not know the name as God. You may not know the name as Jesus, yeah. but you know, bam, yeah. good God. Some, something is more, something is greater than I. In other words, God implanted that in all of us to make us without excuse. Now, I'm going to show you God deals with you based on how you dealt with it. And I'm going to show you that. Man, I, uh, I need to copy this tape myself. Um, I, I believe that. that I, uh, but how is it possible to be an atheist? Well, stop, 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 stop. Uh, um, now, 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 watch, watch this, watch this. The question is, how is it possible then to be an atheist? By choice. Okay. Okay. By choice. Okay. In other words, um, watch this. Case in point. Everybody know what a pretty woman looked like. Remember, there was a movie called Pretty Woman. All right, now, every sister has their pulling dress. Her sister. And every sister know if I put this on, somebody going to check this out. You understand what I'm saying? Now, now, she walks by you. You know she pulling it. You're going to act like you didn't see it. But you saw it. You saw it. And if nobody else was looking, you. Why? So you are without excuse. So don't even play like you didn't know. Sister girl came by. Don't even play like you don't know. There is something greater than I. Because God put it in you. And I'm going to show you that because God wanted all of us to be what? Without excuse. So we know all people are without excuse before God since the scriptures tells us that knowledge of God and the knowledge of, of the uh, sufficient moral responsibility can be seen in creation as well as known in the heart. So what am I doing? I'm showing you that God has a standard. For all of us, whether you know the name Jesus, whether you have ever read a Bible or not, God still has a standard by which he's going to judge you. And the question is, what is the standard that he's going to use to judge us by? All right, chime in when you want to, chime in when you can, inside and outside. Now, questions and our premise. We got a premise this morning and to address the question. So we got our questions and the premise, that premise is where we are. Has God made himself known only in the Bible? Has God made himself known only in the Bible? So, so then you don't need a Bible to know there's God. Because God put it in you. You don't need a Bible to know. Uh, people that couldn't read know there's a God. So, has God made himself known only in the Bible? Has God made himself known only through Jesus? So, answering the question, what about the folk that never heard the name Jesus? What about the folk that never had access to a Bible, Old Testament or New Testament? You still know there's a God. Your job is to accept the fact that he is. 
Remember Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All right, you got to and learn of me. But watch this. What is the nature, extent, and value of that revelation? Remember, the revelation is God making known to you something. So what is the nature of that revelation? We talked about the nature of that revelation can be sitting here with a <laughs> so this is so true uh brother here because in africa before the colonial masters came because the colonial masters are the ones who brought the bible mm -hmm. jesus god so in africa before this happened the africans were serving someone greater than them in their own way they had their gods they knew that there was a God of thunder. There was a God of fire. They knew all those things that there is a God. Mm -hmm. And to serve this God and not be on the, in the bad book of this God, they have to be good. Mm -hmm. Just that the God was not Jesus. The God was not the God that they know in the Bible because mm -hmm. they were all illiterates. They did not mm -hmm. know the Bible. So, yes, those that did not know Jesus so or God. There is yes. a natural implant yes. of all folk that there's something greater than I. There's something more powerful. There's something up there. Uh, uh, Brother Pointer, you had something? I want I want people to be able to hear the, hear, hear the questions and get that right back because you ain't going to be answering all of them questions. <laughs> <laughs> now you say what? So while I studied Romans 10, mm -hmm. that whole chapter, I, s I saw somebody or I could see that Paul was answering <laughs> that same question. What about them? Mm -hmm. What about them? You know, and, and Paul ended up saying that uh, who 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 going to know about unless somebody sin? OK, uh, remember in, in Romans chapter 10, uh, the emphasis is on the gospel and the preacher being sent to teach. How can they understand? How can they know uh, without? Uh, and, 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 and how can he preach except he be what? Sent. So um, remember that was one of those that we left in the book. Uh, because right now, uh, you, you, know, you, know, you know how when you, when you go, go to bed at night, and you think you need all this cover, you have a quilt, you have a sheet, you have a blanket, all this kind of stuff, and then somewhere through the night, you just start peeling the stuff back. You feel like you don't need that in the bed right now because it, it has a place for later, all right? And then you realize that, hey, I don't need it, and then you start peeling off. So those things we're going to leave in the book, we're going to peel off that we don't need right now. Sister Doyle. Okay, if you don't mind, I need you to quit that again because I need people to hear the questions that are being asked so they know how we respond. When I was growing up in the Baptist church as mm -hmm. a little girl, when I got grown, I stopped going to church. I mm -hmm. started doing my own thing. But I knew there was something greater than me, but I mm -hmm. didn't know what it was. And I wanted to know about God, but mm -hmm. I didn't know how to know about God. Mm -hmm. Because when I talked to people about it, it didn't never hit my spirit right. Mm -hmm. And Brother Hildred, I knew him for 10 years mm -hmm. before he ever spoke to me. Mm. And he never sat in my station before until that one day he sat in my station and we started talking. Mm -hmm. And I asked him a question mm -hmm. about his church. He said, and he told me that the church I go to is a small, intimate church, and he would teach you about God. Mm -hmm. I said, it wasn't a bit fancy church. I don't like the fancy, so he's not mm. even teach you. Mm -hmm. And I've been coming here ever since off and on, but I still come. Oh, I'm so this church he was, tell, he was telling you about? This is the first one I've ever been to since, since I was a little girl. All right, now, you need to understand, the Baptist church did not make you aware of God. You were already aware that something was wrong in your spirit, and you want to, you, in other words, you want to feed what was wrong you wanted to correct what was wrong you had to meet the need of what I'm, I'm, I'm battling something that I know I can fix 
but I just don't know how to fix it, but I know there's someone who can. I need to put myself in a situation. So, um, so it's not that, but it's always him. So I, I, I need you to keep track of how we are progressing through this so when we get to the end and we answer the question, all the questions will be answered. I don't want to raise any questions. I don't want to leave anything unsaid or undone at the end. So what is the nature, extent, and value of that revelation? Remember we said God makes revelation. In other words, he makes known. He reveals. All right. And how does it compare with the knowledge we have of God through Christ and the scripture? All right. Nature tells me there is a God. Now, I can't be saved by just knowing there is a God. I can't be saved by just saying how beautiful nature is. I can't not be saved just because I'm cognate of the fact that there is a God. I can't be saved just because I believe there is a God somewhere. I can't be saved because I believe there's a higher power. That won't save me. But that lets me know that God didn't leave me without a connection. Okay? Now, let's move and, and holler when you need to. Now, does everyone inherently know God? Does everyone inherently know God? I would now, say yes. Now, now, I, now, when I say know God, I'm not saying know all the things about God. I'm saying no, there is a God. There's something better. There's something greater. There's something more powerful than me. Where did all this stuff? That, man, it's something. Yes, and as Brother Peters just said, yes. Uh, does everyone in hell, God put it in you. God would be unfair. Amen. God would be unfair if he didn't or had not put it in you to know enough to either accept or reject, pursue or let it die. Now, Sister Doyle could have allowed her situation to die, but instead she chose to what? Pursue it through knowledge. And a brush, see, if you seek, you will find the answer to whatever it is that you're looking for. She was working, and Brother Hildred comes along. It was, it was Hildred, right? Hildred comes along and tell about, about this small, quaint congregation where a dynamic preacher can share with you what thus says the Lord. You need to come on out there. And so she came on out there, and the Bible uh, spoke for itself, and she's been rolling based on the word of God herself. But that desire to know had to be there in other words I can't give you a desire you got to want it for yourself you can be in graduate school majoring in whatever it is but you got to want to go you got to want to go to class you got to want to seek that knowledge you got to want to embrace it you got to want to know it enough where you can spew it for yourself and no professor can give you that now he can take what you have and and pump it pump it and motivate it but I can't motivate a dead dog. Why can't I motivate a dead dog? Book of dead. And dead things don't do nothing. All right, they don't do not one thing. Sister Doyle. He's Rover. He's dead all over. When you was talking about um, inheriting knowing God, I started thinking about my life again. That was a void. Mm hmm and people, no, let me raise that. I put everything in that void except what belongs there. And the only thing going in that void was God. Now, when I put him where he belong, I'm okay with me. But when I put people, place, and things and them in there, it messed me all up. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to know you in order to know God. See, uh, oh, you're going to hear it again. <laughs> You need, to, <laughs> you need to understand that God made it so simple for us that regardless of what your people, people always ask, ask the question, what about the slaves? What about the Africans? What about this? What about the pygmies? What about the people that don't have access to this, don't have access? What about them? God has already made allowances for them. 
like he made allowance for you. He made allowance for them. Otherwise, he would be an unfair God. And I'm going to show you how he made allowance. Now, it ain't what you think necessarily, and it's not how you think it necessarily. So does everyone inherently know God? Yes. If so, in what way or ways? We just listed uh, 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 five premises, those, those ways we said, uh, uh, um, and then we're going to accentuate those and we'll build on those. But the last one is through revelation. And revelation deals with what? Nature, conscious, and, and knowledge. Now, did you, did you ever believe that uh, when the Bible says, study to show yourself a proven to God, a workman that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth? Do you, do you, do, do you know why God says study? And study is not an option. It is a command. It's, it's, it, it is a command. And when you fail to allow yourself to grow, that's like you cutting off your nose. Thank you. To despite your face. All right. But who the, but who the one hurting? Marcia? Who can't sniff now? Who look jacked, you know, without a nose, ask Michael, without, without a nose, I know, I know, I know, that was cold, that was low, uh, but I'm just talking about nose, yes, sir. But hey, uh, why did God say study, you know, that's like going to school, if you don't study the book, you don't know what's in it, so God told us to study to show ourselves the proof that we don't go and study. Now watch this. Well, no, you have access to the book. Right. Watch this now. I'm start homing in on some stuff. Mm -hmm. You have access to the book. So God's mm -hmm. going to hold you accountable for what you had what? Access, access to. to. You had access to the book. Right. And he said, seek ye out, out of, of the, the book, book and right. read. Duh. <laughs> yeah. And if you and if, and if you and if you got a problem, uh, <clears throat> Sister Blyler said, put an app on your phone and 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 most of them will read the scriptures to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So going back to the original question. Mm -hmm. I said, <clears throat> mm -hmm. And in the middle of this lesson, and I said accordingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We still know because within ourselves that there's something greater than us. Mm -hmm. That's when the accordingly is going to come in. Each and I'm going to be building on that accordingly. Um, words have meaning and, and, and words have purpose. It's our responsibility is to know the words that God used. And when we know the words God used and we apply them to our life and our standard, it makes a difference. You know, uh, terminology. There, there, there used to be uh, an area of concentration called medical terminology. You went and you got an associate degree in medical terminology, so you would be able to transcribe and transcript other, other information and know what it meant so you could type up information and follow medical reports and things of this type, medical terminology. Uh, it enhanced your ability to understand uh, the conversation, so to speak. We have biblical terminology. Every child of God ought to familiarize himself with what? Biblical terminology. So they'll know exactly what God is saying. So now, we will begin with defining the terms used in this brief synopsis. And, and, and I, I don't call this a, a study. I call it a brief synopsis. Uh, why do you think I would call it a brief synopsis? What is a synopsis? Hmm? No, I don't want your point of view on me. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody. But it, in, but it embraces everything that God said about it. So rather than say the word everybody, everything God said about it. Because 
she may be saying one thing, he may be saying something else, that one's saying something else. But if I keep it with that, yes, ma'am, I would, I would be right in saying that. Now, uh, any questions so far? See how we're scaffolding the information, we're building on it, because I'm, I'm eliminating questions as I go. So when I get to the end, I pass off the baton of information to you, and you ought to be able to do what? Take it and run on and see what the end is going to be. All right? Any, any, any questions so far? Everybody good? You good, too? You good, too? Okay. All right. Now, our use of the term revelation. Remember, our, the last thing was revelation, and we said God, uh, God uses, God reveals things to us through what? Revelation, and we said revelation is God's ability and God's effort to reveal to us those things we need to know. And revelation, God revealed things to us through what? Nature, through our what? Consciousness, and through knowledge, okay? So the use of the term revelation comes from the Greek word apokopos. <coughs> I can't even get my tongue right. <coughs> apocalupis, 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 which means to uncover, to reveal, to disclose, or to make known. God is making known something. An example would be uh, Romans chapter 16, verse number 25. Now to him that is of power, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was what kept secret since the world began. But remember Paul said that, that, that how by what revelation God made known to him the mystery. And when he got it, he did what? He wrote it down in few words. words so when you read you might <coughs> understand so with Romans 16 25 put Ephesians chapter 3 uh, 1 through 5 matter of fact let's go over there right quick Ephesians 3 1 through 5 uh, we're doing a study on the situation so everybody know exactly where we are when we ask and answer the question what about them God did not leave them out no, sir. God incorp incorporated them in the big picture and they were incorporated from the foundation of the world so in Ephesians chapter 3 beginning at verse number 1 listen to what Paul had to say for this cause he, Paul says for this cause I Paul I, Paul, the prisoner, of Jesus the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. For you Gentiles. We know his mission was to who? To the Gentiles. They were not Jews, but to the Gentiles, because there's going to be two types of people that comprise the kingdom, the Jew and the and Gentile. The Gentile. But right. those Jews and Gentiles are going to become one. one, no longer Jew or Gentile. But the word went out to the Jews. They're going to be without excuse to the Gentiles. So anything or anybody that wasn't a Jew was classified as a Gentile. So the Gentiles in cover, uh, in, in includes all the groups that are not what? Jewish. So when the word went out, Jews got it. You without excuse. Gentiles got it. You are too without what? Excuse. So every child of God sitting in the worship service or in a Bible class this morning, wherever you are, you are without what? Excuse, excuse. not knowing the will and the word of the Amen. Lord. God said, uh, 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 you, you are without excuse, not knowing what the power. Without knowing the power. He said in Matthew twenty two twenty nine, 29, you do err not knowing what the scripture or the power of God. So when you don't know, it's because you choose not to learn. Let me say it again. When you don't know, it's when you choose not to learn. If you want to know Spanish, you, you'll learn it. 
if you want to become a dog whisperer, you will learn how to whisper to a dog. Whatever you want. So don't hand me this bull about church folk sitting up in here playing crazy. All right. More church folk going to end up in hell than you can than you can imagine, because just coming to church ain't going to save you. Just having mental access of God ain't going to save you. Just knowing there's a God somewhere not going to save you. Brother Pointer. Oh, I mean to be strong. Mm-hmm. Does that implication apply? Does that implication apply to Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14? Not in this sense, because if you go to Matthew chapter 7, uh-huh. verse 13 and 14, he is talking about the choices people have. You have a choice. He, he's talking about uh, uh, enter ye in at the straight gate, all right? And then he says, broad is the way, all right? And then he says, but then there's a narrow gate, in other words, uh, and few there be that what? Find it. So when you understand the few are those that are going to do what? Study, apply themselves, and do what God told them to do. Why? Because if everybody come to worship service at Rock Springs Road, everybody that listen in to the worship service or Bible class, at the Rock Springs Road congregation have all have what access to the same information. What do they do with it? What they do with it is up to them. It's their choice. Some people take it and grow with it. Some people take it and learn from it. Some people take it and apply it and teach it and share it with others. Some people change the station. Your desire. Remember I said you have to have a desire for it at any given time. Uh, uh, I would, I would say 70% of the church available to be on our Zoom who have access are not there. And you can't get it no better than this. And I'm not patting myself on the back, but uh, when God says study to show yourself approved unto God, that's what I do. Because I'm going to be held accountable. I'm going to have to give an account of the talent and the blessings that God has blessed me with. So I'm going to use mine in whatever platform we have. If it ain't but three, if all of you know me, if I ain't got but three people here, I'm going to teach and preach the same if I had 300 folk here. Because the number don't determine my destiny. You can get it if you want to. Uh, uh, you know what lemons are? Not squeezing lemons, but lemons, those little, little rodent looking things. Every seven years, they, they, they come out, and they do a migration. They just start running and herd packs of them, all right? And they'll run to the edge of the cliff, and they'll just run over. Mm-hmm. They're like little, little rats, little rats, <laughs> all right, little rats. And, and, and they'll run, and they just, why? Because they get caught up in following the crowd. Uh, church folk get caught up in following the crowd, <laughs> all right? Uh, I'll, I'll preach about those folks later. Oh, my time is up. I'm going to have to stop right here. Um, but let me, let, me, let, me, let me do one more, one more, and then I close. Qualifications, qualifications. Therefore, in terms of divine revelation, we're talking about revelation right now, not the book of revelation, but revelation being revealed to us. All right? It is God, when I talk about revelation, it's God making himself known to the recipients of that revelation. And the recipients are the angels and humanity. You, you either an angelic being or you're a human being. So when God makes revelation known, remember he said that the angels didn't even know when the end is going to be. There's some stuff the angels don't know. All right. So when you understand that, Therefore, in terms of divine revelation, it is God making himself known to the recipients of that revelation, angelic beings and humanity. The fact that God must make himself known in order for us to know him is due to the fact that we are what? Finite. All right. You have no way of knowing anything about God if God don't reveal it to you. You can't investigate God. 
you know, you know, girls that are dating folk, uh, if, if she's smart, uh, she get his information, says, oh, let me, let me see. Oh, criminal. Oh, snap. Bankrupt five times. Oh, no. Well, I tell you what, uh, I read enough. Uh, rise, all right. Remember, remember the, the poet said, uh, after all this, I rise. It's time to rise up. All right. So, so, and, and then God is infinite. In other words, we are errant. We are subject to error. We're subject to making mistakes, but God will not. Uh, I got, I got to stop right here. Question, comment about anything I've said up to this point. We're moving in that direction. Stay with me. Study ahead. Bring some information to the class. Be a contributor, but be but be present, be present in the class. For those that are here, we thank God for your presence, for being here, but I gotta close out now. I'm already uh, a couple minutes over time. Any question or comment before we close? Good, good, good class, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, prayer, prayer requests, any prayer requests? Brother Norton? Let's keep brother and sister Frazier in prayer. Brother mm -hmm. Frazier is doing somewhat better after mm -hmm. his little stumbling around and fell. Mm -hmm. uh, keep sister Brown in prayer. I make some connection with her, and I think she's just kind of fumbling with some things that mm -hmm. she can't uh, overcome right now. And I'm also asking you to, uh, I'm asking the church to have prayer for my neighbor. He's a he's a contentious man. Uh, he, yeah, ain't so so. But anyway, uh, his mm -hmm. uh, his name is Rod, and his wife is uh, named Jerry. Uh, he's very cantankerous at times, and I just remember the Norton family as a whole. Uh, okay. There's some things going on in the Norton family that uh, I can't put do a whole lot about because I'm way on this end. But anyway, that's my prayer request for this morning. All right, brother Norton's asking for prayer request for brother and sister Frazier, sister Brown. And for his cantankerous neighbor, uh, he's asking for prayer for those uh, as well. Sister Isona. Um, please keep my friend Miriam, um, the one who always comes from Nigeria and brings hmm. me all these beautiful dresses. Mm -hmm. uh, she's traveling to Austria for a conference, so she asks for prayers for travel mercies. All right, Sister Isona is asking for prayer for uh, her name again. Miriam, all right, for prayers for Miriam as she traveled to Aust uh, Austria or Australia? Austria. Okay, Austria. Uh, so please keep them in prayer as well. Any other prayer requests before we close? Inside or out? Yes. Sister, Sister Williamson calling in. Um, just keep me in prayer as I try to come uh, uh, get to church. Um, and just keep me and my family in prayer. All right, Sister Williams is asking for prayer for both herself and family. Uh, we know her to be a committed and faithful child of God, and we just love and thank God for her. Sister Doyle. Yes, I want to keep one of my classmates, Claude Davis, in prayer. He came home from work and thought his wife was taking a nap, and she never woke up. So she mm. died in her sleep while he was at work. So keep him and his family in prayer. Mm. Um, Claude Davis. Uh, Sister Doyle is asking for prayer for uh, a friend, Claude Davis, who traveled to work, came home and found that his wife uh, had passed in her sleep, so please keep them in prayer. It's got to be a devastating thing. Uh, any other prayer requests? If not, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious Father God, we truly thank you for this day, for your love, your grace, and for your mercy, for keeping us and bringing us to this point in time, blessing us, dear God, in such a way that we might be a blessing to others along our way. We pray to God for those who ask for prayers for themselves and prayers for others. We know, dear God, that you are able to see us through whatever challenges we face, whatever hills we have to climb, whatever valleys we have to go through. We know, dear God, that you are with us every step of the way. For those, dear God, that have lost loved ones, uh, we know, dear God, that you're still a bridge bearer in the sense that you're a bridge, you hold us up, and you allow us to walk across on faith. We know, dear God, that we have faith in the faith of Christ. So we know that faith of Christ we can depend on. We just trust, dear God, that you will continue to bless them and bless us as well. Keep us as our prayer and our plea. In Jesus' name we say it all. Let every heart say amen. At this time, brethren, let's prepare for worship.
morning, good morning. We would like to say good morning again to those who are here, the family of God at the Roxburgh Road Church of Christ, those of you who are visiting with us, and those of you who are out there listening. We're getting ready for our <coughs> devotional songs. Our first song will be uh, 488, Standing on the Promises. 488, Standing on the Promises. All hail, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring, glory in the highest high will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, and standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fall. When the howling storms of doubt and fears are sailed, and by the living word of God I shall prevail. I'm standing on the promises of God and standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I am standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fall, and listening every moment to the Spirit's call, or resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God, and standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Flip right over to 308, kneel at the cross. 308, kneel at the cross. On hell. Kneel at the cross, and Christ will meet you there. He intercedes for you. I'll lift up your voice and leave with him your care. I and begin night anew. I kneel at the cross. I leave every care. I kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there. I kneel at the cross, there is room for all who want his glory share. A bliss there awaits, and harm can never be formed. Of those who are anchored in, I kneel at the cross. I leave every care. I kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross and give your idols up. Look unto realms above and turn not again to my sparkling cup. Those who are anchored them kneel at the cross. i leave every Kneel at the cross. Jesus will meet you there. I would like 
sing, we would like to sing this song, after which we have scripture reading and prayer. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. It's in the supplemental book. I uh, hope you have one in front of you. This is our prayer song. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on other thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm calling Savior, oh Savior, why don't you hear my humble cry? morning church this morning I'm going to be reading from the book of Acts 4 and I'll be reading verse 12 and it reads neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved I have just read Acts 4 and verse 12, may the Lord add a blessing and hear us to the doers of his word. Amen. Let us bow. Our Father in heaven, our Lord and our God, Father, it is with joy and thanks in our hearts that we come before you this morning. Father, I want to thank you for opening our eyes to see this day. Amen. want to thank you, Father, for giving us our voices so that we can sing praises to you yes. and continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes. Father, I want to thank you for joining Mercy, for bringing us here in the building. I also want to thank you, Father, for the ability that you've given to those, the privilege that you've given to those who are not here with us, but accessing this teaching of your word through various means of um, internet or devices. Father, I also want to thank you for those beyond the shores of the United States who are locked in this day to listen to a portion of your word or your gospel. Yes. Yes. Father, it comes to mind those who are watching from Namibia, those who are locking in from Nigeria, and those that were baptized in France who are also on, on the internet at this time. Father, we also want to thank you for those who are in Germany and in the United Kingdom that were baptized through this congregation that meets here in Stone Christ. Father, I want to thank you for this day. We continue to praise your name. We continue to give you all adoration, Father. Heavenly Father, as we go into this service, we come before you, Father, to ask for forgiveness of our sins. Father, in any way that we've come short of your glory, we ask for forgiveness. At the same time, Father, we ask that you give us a mind that before we go through this service, if we, we have wronged anybody, Father, give us that ability so that we can also go to them and ask for forgiveness. Lord, we also want to pray for every person who is going through some kind of discomfort at this time. Father, we ask for that you grant them comfort. Father, we pray for those who are sick, that you heal them in their point of need. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are looking for jobs. We pray that, Father, you, you grant them the ability or the possibility of a job. You open windows for them. Father, we pray for those who are traveling. 
We pray that you grant them uh, journey mercy to and fro their destination. Heavenly Father, this morning our prayers to you is that you open our hearts, you open our minds, you give us enough understanding that when the message is preached, even the least among us will be able to understand. Amen. Father, I want to ask prayers for our preacher, Brother Hare and his family. We continue to pray that Father, he will grow stronger by the day, that he will not grow weary as he brings the message, as he continues to teach from the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you this day that whatever we do today, Father, let it be according to your will and not us. We pray and ask all these and many other blessings to the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Um, in your red song book, we're going to sing. 148. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. 148 in your red or your blue hymn book. On half. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. From the heavens, praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest. All the angels praise proclaim, all you hosts to give the praise him. Sun and moon and stars on high, praise him, O ye heavens and heaven, and ye flood above the sky. And let them praise the gift Jehovah. For his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All you fruitful trees and cedars, all you hills and mountains high, creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds in the heaven fly, kings of earth and all ye people, princes great as judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, and his men and children small. Let them praise the gift Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted. And his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Amen. If you will, Hallelujah. take your hymn book. <coughs> I'll have to sing a familiar song that I know we know. Uh, let's go and sing uh, 342. And to be redundant with it, but God is good. And Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes. Oh, have trouble sometimes are oh, here. Yeah. Feeling men, feeling men, hearts will tell. Freedom we all, we all hold dear. Now we next day. Humble your heart, heart to God. Save from the, save from, from the, the chest in a run. Seek the way, pilgrims pil 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 trod, Christians away. And Jesus is coming, is coming soon. Morning or morning, morning or night or noon. 
Many will, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will, trumpets will surely sound. And out of the dead, the dead shall rise. Rise with me, rise with me in the sky. Going where, going where no one died. Heaven was bound. And love was so many, many cold. Losing their, losing their homes of gold. This is God's this word, God's His word, word is stone. He was a bomb. When these signs shall when come, come, come to pass, nearing the, nearing the end at last. It will come very, will come very fast. fast. Trumpets will, will sound. My Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming soon. Morning or morning or night or noon. Many will, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will, trumpets will surely sound. And all of the things, the things shall rise. Righteous me, righteous me in the sky. Going where, going where no one dies. Heaven was found, and troubles will soon, troubles will soon, soon be, be over. Happy for, happy for forevermore. When we meet on, on that shore, free from all care. We're rising up we're in, up in, in the, the sky, telling this, telling this the world goodbye. goodbye. Home was we did, did shall fly, glory to share. Our Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming soon. Morning or morning or night or noon. Many will, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will, trumpets will surely sound. And all of the dead, the dead shall rise. Righteous me, righteous me in the sky. Going where, going where no one died. Heaven was bound. Our Jesus is come, coming soon. Morning or morning or night or noon. Many will, many will meet their doom. Trumpets will, trumpets will surely sound. And all of the dead, the dead shall rise. Righteous me, righteous me in the sky. Going where, going where no one dies. Heaven was found. Amen. Can we all say amen again? God is indeed a good and glorious God. And we're just thankful because God has been good to each and every one of us. And for that alone, we ought to be able to say amen. amen. God has brought us to a place where we have never been before. We have seen things that we have never saw before. We are in a position now where we've never been before. God is good. And because he's been good, I can stand up and I can testify that I know my God has been good to me and just looking at you I can tell he's been good to you too can I get an amen, amen. every now and then amen. we all will be able to say it it was read into your more uh, to your hearing this this morning uh, from the Word of God but first let me introduce ourselves we are the Church of Christ we are that blood-bought spirit-filled institution that Jesus Christ declared he would build you see one day in the long ago on the coast of Caesarea Philippi Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And after all was said and done, Peter cried out, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus declared, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona. Why? Because flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And Jesus goes on to say that upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It, just one. And where there's one of something, there are no choices in the matter. Can I get a witness? And we are all members this morning 
alive and well. Members of the Lord's church, the church you can read about in the Bible, the one church of the Bible, the church that God is coming back for, that kingdom that he would deliver up to his father. Can I get a witness? Y'all stay with me for just a little while. Uh, uh, this morning, I, I, I have to deal with some things. So uh, 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 if you got to go to work, do what they usually do and just um, do what you got to do. But make sure you leave God right before you leave. All right. Now, that's not to say I'm going to be long. Uh, you know, I had to frown up. Say, oh, man, we'll be long. I know it's not going to be that long. All right. It was read into your hearing this morning from the book of Acts, Acts chapter four, and the verse is number 12. My subject this morning, uh, pluralism is not in the body. Uh, you know what pluralism is? Pluralism simply means more than one. Many, there are several. There's more than that one. Plural, meaning two or more. Uh, it's not in the body. So when I talk about pluralism from today, it's not in the body, the body of Christ. So there's only one true religion. There's only one true religion. Now this morning, I'm going to need some help. Uh, help me when you can. Now, if you don't agree, uh, if, if you can't stand on the truth for yourself, then just let me ride. I got quiet there. Uh, only one true religion. We present a challenge this morning to religious pluralism. In other words, religious pluralism encourages, supports, and sustained the acceptance of the coexistence of many different religions when there is but one. You see, there is salvation in no other. Acts chapter 4 and the verses 12. For there is none other name. Acts 4 chapter 12. It's genuine, Acts 4, chapter 12. It's authentic, Acts 4, chapter 12. It's the only one in Scripture. One Lord, one faith, one body. Amen. Peter, James, and John all preach salvation in no other. Paul declared the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and that Christ is coming back for his church and no other. Amen. Apostles couldn't change it. Angels couldn't change it. It's only one, not many. It's only one and not one of them. Those outside the scripture, when I say them, those are the ones that are outside the scripture. When I say them, those are the ones you can't find inside the scripture. When I talk about them, they are outside of him. It's only found in him being Christ Jesus. Salvation is found through Christ and in Christ alone. Second Timothy chapter two and the verses number 10. The Bible says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may obtain the salvation, which is where? In Christ Jesus. Why? Because salvation cannot be found in no other. Amen. Paul declared in Ephesians chapter 2 in the verse 12, all right, that at that time, before you became a Christian, at that time, before you became a child of God, at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, Amen. having no hope and without God in the world at that time. You see, that was then and is now the status of every unbeliever, Amen. everyone outside the body of Christ, outside the saving grace of Almighty God. We have no hope outside of Christ. And we are without God outside of Christ in this world. And in Romans chapter 1 
in verse number 20, Paul explains God's eternal power and deity can be seen through everything around us so that all persons are without excuse. There is a God up there. And in Romans chapter 2 and in verse number 15, God's moral law is written on the hearts of all men everywhere and in every place. So we have an instinctive grasp on the difference between right and wrong. Amen. You see, pluralism is not in the body. The body, it's just one. You see, there are multitudes of religions in the world, but only one way, one plan, one man, one church. In Romans chapter 2, in the verse of 7, Paul explains that God offers eternal life to all who will seek for him in well-doing. But unfortunately, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 32, rather than worship and serve the creator God, people ignored the creator and fashioned God's of their own choosing, pluralism of religion. For example, primitive Baptists, Southern Baptists, Sabbath day Baptists, all Baptists, but saying different things. There's more than one, and God has said, ain't but one. And rather than obey and follow the moral law, men flop the moral law and plunge themselves into immorality and degeneracy. And then in Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 11, all men, in other words, says Paul, whether Jew or Greek, all men are under the power of sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None is righteous, not one. None seek for God, no one understands, and all have gone wrong. Can I get a witness every now and then? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we need a way back home. Moreover, Paul explains in uh, chapter 3, verse 19 and 20, no one can redeem himself from this situation of condemnation by righteous living. You can't live right enough to save yourself. Ain't enough right in you to save yourself. How it's not in, the Bible says, it's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Paul says, no man in Galatians chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. Tithing won't save you. Ten Commandments won't save you. Remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy, that won't save you. Talking about David can't save you. Talking about Moses or Elijah won't save you. Y'all remember when the cloud was lifted, only one standing was who? Jesus. It is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them, and every man held accountable. Then over in Galatians chapter 2, in verse number 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the Bible says in John 1, 17, the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Even when you have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be what? Justified by the faith of Christ, talking about his worthiness to be believed. When I talk about the faith of Christ, 
I'm not talking about Christ believing something. I'm talking about you believing in the capability, the worthiness of Christ to be believed, his trustworthiness, his fidelity, his goodness, and not by the works of the law. For the law, for the works of the law shall no flesh be what? Justified. You see, it's not faith in Christ, but faith of Christ, talking about his worthiness to believe, his power of forgiveness, his grace, his mercy, his love, and his trustworthy character. That's what I'm talking about, the faith of Christ. You see, righteousness is not of your own self, but through what? The faith of Christ. Get for me Philippians chapter 3. In verse number 9, Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 9. I need you to go quickly. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 9. You see, the faith of Christ always precedes our faith in Christ. You got to believe that Christ is and capable and all this about him before you believe in him. You got to know he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Philippians chapter 3 and the verses 9, the Bible says. And be found in him. The Bible says, and be found in him. Not having, not having my, my own righteousness, righteousness which, which is, is of, of the, the law, law but, but that, that which, which is, is through the, the faith, faith of, Christ, of Christ, the righteousness, righteousness which, which is, is of God, God by, by faith. faith. You see, righteousness is not of our own, but through the faith of Christ. You see, the faith of Christ always precedes our faith. What good would it do us to believe in Christ for salvation if he were not wholly reliable to save us? But he can be trusted. He can be trusted to save to the uttermost. In other words, All who come unto God will be saved. Hebrews chapter 7 in the verses 25. And he said, come unto me. Who? All ye that what? Labor and are heavy laden. What will you do? I'll give you rest. This is why Paul says to the terrified Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. Acts chapter 16 and verse number 31. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Confucius, but Christ. Why? Because Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other name. But in chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 21 through 26, Paul explains that God has provided a way of escape. And our escape is by way of who? Jesus Christ, whose death on the cross is the sacrifice for our sin, thereby freeing up God's grace. When Christ died on the cross, he freed up God's grace. He freed up God's mercy. He freed up God's forgiveness. He freed up God's reconciliation. It was at the cross God made it. He made it all possible at the cross for us to have a what restored relationship with Christ it was at the cross where Christ made atonement it was at the cross where he bled suffered and died it was at the cross Christ made a way for man to return from what Uh, from from an outside relationship to an inside relationship to enter into a proper relationship with Almighty God. You see the universality of sin and the uniqueness of Christ's sacrifice, his atoning death draws the line on pluralism, closing the door to another way. Apart from Christ. And Christ alone, there are multitudes of religions live streaming this morning. And they are all mutually 
contradicting one another. Some say, <clears throat> just believe. Some say, receive God in your heart. Some say, say this prayer with me. You see, religious pluralism is the belief that all religions are true. You see, now watch this. Uh, uh, in math, in math uh, uh, everything, all things can be wrong, but all things can't be right. It's contrary yeah. to law. It's contrary to nature. Everything that's saying something different can't be right. But everything saying something different must be wrong. Amen. One may be better than the other, but all are required, says who? They all may be related in some way. They all may feel they are better in some way. They may all feel they're adequate in some way, says who? Not God. You see, they can't all be true. Why? Because they all make contradictory statements. They all say different plans. They all have different practices. For example, Islam. That's the Muslims, asserts that there is a personal God who is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscious, who created the world, and that, watch this, people are responsible to believe in him. Watch this. But they also believe that man can perform works that will merit salvation. And that after this life, there awaits an eternal heaven and hell for everybody. Now, Buddhism believes none of these things. So that tells me we all can't be right, but we all can be wrong. According to Buddhism, there is no personal God. The world is eternal. Man does not have a soul separate and apart from his body. There is no such thing as heaven or hell, let alone salvation. And sin is an illusionary thing in your mind. Something is wrong with that teaching. You see, Islam and Buddhism have nothing in common, and neither are they sanctioned by God, because pluralism, is not in the body of Christ. It's just one. Amen. There are multitudes of religions in the world this morning, but only one way, one plan, one man, one church, nothing plural about that. Amen. You see, pluralism have nothing in common. So, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So clearly, they both cannot be right. Islam and Buddhism can both be false, but both cannot be true. Can I get a witness? They both cannot be true, they both cannot be truth, and they both cannot be right. You see, Jesus is the only way to God this morning. Not Islam, not Buddhism, not confusion, not Hinduism, not Judaism, nor any pluralism is not in the body of Christ this morning. You see, there is no solution for sin apart from the atoning death of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Y'all, 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 y'all stay with me for just a little while. You see, apart from the cross of Christ, there's just no provision for getting out of sin. Without the cross, I can't get out of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You see, without the cross, there is no other provisions made for me to get out of sin, to pick up grace, pick up mercy, pick up forgiveness, and pick up reconciliation. How do I know it? 
How do I know it? How do I know it? It's not in pluralism that will save me. It's in oneness of Christ Jesus. There's no other way. You see, Christ's sacrificial death on the cross was efficacious for human sin. In other words, it was enough. It was all was needed. It was all that was required. It was what was necessary. And his resurrection from the dead put the icing on the cake. Can I get a witness? Confucius dead. Been dead. Never will get up till God called him. Y'all remember Jesus walking along with his disciples, and he was talking to him. He said, look, uh, uh, I'm going to have to leave y'all, uh, but I ain't going to leave you alone. But then he said, before he said that, he says, I got to go. I, I, I'm going to die, but I ain't going to stay dead. I'm going to die, but I'm coming back. He says, I'll be back in three days. Count them, one day, two days, three. I'll be back in three days. All the stuff that I said, I said, I, I, Jesus, Jesus was condemned for all the things that he said. Jesus was crucified for all the things that he said about being just one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. In other words, if you want to be saved, you got to come to who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch this. Watch this now. Because Jesus claimed to be God's anointed and the heralder of the kingdom of God. And God raising Jesus from the dead vindicated him how publicly and unequivocally those illegitimate claims that they said he made, those blasphemous claims they said he made for which Jesus was crucified. If this man had been raised from the dead, then God, watch this, then the God that he had allegedly blasphemed the God that he allegedly talked against supposedly that he falsely made claims about this same God publicly raised him from the dead so when God raised Jesus from the dead that vindicated him that said Jesus everything you said is true you said I'm the son of God it's true. You said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Apparently, that was true. You said that blood of bulls and goats would no longer satisfy God's need for, for forgiveness and repentance. And I shed my blood that all might be saved. Apparently, that was the truth. You see, the scribes accused him of blasphemy. When Jesus told a paraplegic man, your sins are forgiven. Mark chapter 9, verse 1 through 8. The Jews accused Jesus of blasphemy for making himself God. The high priest accused him of blasphemy for claiming to be the Christ, the Son of God. And when God raised him, being Jesus, from the dead, God said, it's all true. God vindicated Jesus and said, it's all true. He is the only way. No pluralism up in here. He is the son of God. And in him, I'm well pleased. It's all true. He is truth. And there is no pluralism up in here. And now it's on the basis of the resurrection that we claim and that we can believe and that we can stand on the efficacy of Christ's atoning death. He died to set us free. He died to make a way for us and to get us back to God and to follow him. He died and for that reason and for Christ alone is the reason we have salvation. He was chosen by God. He's the only son of God. Amen. He's the only one that came down from heaven and the only one that went back. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Jesus himself declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, salvation is a gift of God that we receive through Jesus Christ. Get from Ephesians chapter 2. 
in verse number eight. Ephesians chapter two in verse number eight. Uh, quickly now, uh, I'm going to be hitting a couple of them. Uh, salvation is a gift from God that we receive through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, what does it say? For by grace. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved, are you saved through faith, faith and that not of, not of yourselves. yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's the gift. In other words, letting you know that salvation is the gift of God. Amen. And then a gift from me, Hebrews chapter 4. In verse number 11, in verse number 15, Hebrews 4, in verse number 15, he being Jesus and he alone lived a perfect and sinless life. He is the reason why it ain't but one. Because he lived a sinless and perfect life, it ain't but one. Buddha couldn't right. do it. Muhammad couldn't do it. Confucius couldn't do it. Nobody but Jesus. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 15, for we have for not, we have not a, a high, high priest, priest which cannot, which be, touched cannot be touched with, with the, the feelings of our infirmities, infirmities but, but was, was in all, all points. points. Come on now. Tempted. He was tempted like you. Like he was tempted like me. We are quick to say, Amen. well, well, you know, uh, the devil made me do it. We're quick to say, well, well, you know, I'm just a man. You, you, we, 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 we are quick to say, well, you know, uh, 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 God put it there and I was tempted. The Bible says he was tempted in all points like, like as, as we, we are, are yet without sin. without sin. Amen. He is the only reason we have salvation. He's the only reason there is no pluralism because only Jesus could live this life and never sin. Only Jesus could live a perfect life and say, and I can say, for God I'll live. And for God, I'll die. Get for me first John chapter two in verse number two. He is the only sacrifice. Buddha couldn't sacrifice for you. Confucius couldn't sacrifice for you. Uh, Muhammad couldn't sacrifice for you. Joseph Smith, honor rascals. None of them could sacrifice for you. The Bible says in John first John chapter two in verse number two, the Bible says, and he, he is, is the, the propitiation, propitiation for our sins, for our sins and, and not for our only, sins only, but for the sins of the, of the whole, whole world. world. Now, now watch this, watch this. Now, hit, give me that next verse because I can't stop right there. The Bible hereby says, we hereby know. we do know that we know him. If Come on. we keep his if commandments. If we keep his commandments. You might as well take it another step. He that saith. He that saith he know knows me and keepeth not my commandments, commandments is a liar and, and the, the truth, truth is, is not in him. him. Other words, it ain't but one. Pluralism. No place in the body of Christ. Your church of your choice, no place. You ain't got no choice if it ain't but one. Amen. It's that or nothing. Great, and great. some folk are choosing nothing. Get for me Matthew 5, 17. Christ alone fulfilled all the laws of the prophets. Matthew 5, 17. That makes him qualified to be our savior. That makes him qualified to hold our salvation. That makes him qualified to be the faith that we need to get us through our deeds. Now watch this. The Bible says, uh, think not. He says now in Matthew 5, 17, he says, think yeah, not that I, that I come to destroy, the, destroy law the law or the prophets. Or the prophets. But he says, I am not come to I'm destroy. I have not come to destroy, but, but, but to, to fulfill. fulfill. He's the only one that fulfill all the law of the prophets. Amen. Get from me 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 5. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 5. He's the only one to have conquered death. Hell and the grave, because he said, uh, destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it up again. And we know on the third day, early on the third day, Christ got up, shook off grave clothes, and said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, in verse number 5, listen to the Bible, the word of God. The well, Bible there says, is one God. Now, 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 you, you need to understand the reason why he's worthy, the reason why there is only one way, one man, one plan, there's, there's no pluralism up in here, is because he is the only mediator between God, God and, and man. man. Nobody can stand between you and God but Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nobody. Amen. Your mama may love you, but she can't stand between you and God. Man. Your daddy may be been a 
may have been an authoritarian, but he can't stand between you and God. Only Jesus. So the Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between and one God mediator. and men. Now, now watch this. So that lets me know in this passage alone proves that Jesus is God. It proves that Jesus is God, that hypostatic union. We understand when he was on earth, he was 100% man, 100% God. Can I get a witness? Amen. All right, for there is one God and one, one mediator, mediator between God, between and man, God the man, woo, Jesus good Christ. God Almighty, the man, Amen. Jesus Christ. And it's through all this we know it's Jesus and Jesus only. That's Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12. Everyone who believes and obey. Matter of fact, get for me Acts chapter 13, verse 38 and 9. Acts chapter 13, verse 38 and 39. Everyone who believes and obey God can be set free from their sin. And only Jesus can forgive sin. Only God can forgive sin. So if Jesus can forgive sin, he must be God. The Bible says in verse 38, be it known. The Bible says, first of all, be it known unto you. Unto you. Therefore, therefore men, men and, and brethren, brethren that, that through, through this man. Watch, watch this, watch this. That through this, this man. Amen. Come on, the Bible says. Unto you the is Through preached, this man is preached, preached unto, unto you, you the, the forgiveness, forgiveness of, sin. of sin. Through this man you have forgiveness of sin. Not Buddha. Not confusion, not, not, not nobody but Jesus. Amen. You can't make up this kind of good stuff. Amen. Nobody but Jesus. Amen. Don't put your faith and your trust in nobody but Jesus. No such thing as pluralism in the body of Christ. It's all Christ and no more. There's no hyphenated Christ. No hyphenated Christians. No hyphenated religion. No hyphenated faith in King Jesus. Be it known unto you, therefore, therefore men, men and brethren, brethren that, that through this man, man is good God Almighty, is preached unto you. Come on, is preached the, unto you the forgiveness of sin. And the verse thirty nine says, and by, and by him, him all that still, believe. Watch, 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 still, still talking about him. Amen. It's just Jesus and nobody. Else. If you don't accept, you see people. People, be, the Bible says in Romans chapter one, verse twenty one through thirty. 30, 32, is because people sought after creating gods of their own. They refused to follow the creator. Amen. They refused to accept the law that was given. They, they, they refused to accept the examples that were laid there for them. The reason why you have differences in religion and denomination is because you didn't like that, she didn't like that other thing, and she didn't like something else. And because they didn't like it, she formed one around what she liked and people could get away with. He formed one. So we got smoking Christians. All right. Let me just take a couple of them. All right. Now, 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 smoking Christians. We got some drinking Christians. We got some fornicating Christians. We got some dope head Christians. We got all these kind of Christians who claim, who people who claim to be Christians. They, and, 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 the, and, 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 the, and the reason why they won't hold on to God is because God hold them to the truth. Think about it. Think about it. The only reason many people go where they go is because the choice they made. Well, yeah. Time you start preaching on, on uh, homosexuality, they'll go somewhere where people embrace homosexuality well. because somebody gave them a choice not keeping track of what God said. Oh, snap. And by him, all that believe ye are justified, justified from, from all things, things from, from which ye could what? not be justified. In other words, God gave you a P-A-S-S -S for your P-A-S-T. Do you see that right there? And by him, all that yeah. believe are justified, justified from all, all things, things from which he could, could not be justified. justified by the Good law. God Almighty, by the law. Yeah. Prove it, Brother Hare. Yeah. You know I will. First John, get for me first John chapter two Amen. and verse number twelve. First John chapter two and verse number twelve. We need to stop being scared to tell folk ain't but one way, ain't but one body, ain't but one faith, ain't but one religion. There's nothing plural 
about God. Amen. Well, you said there's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. They must be plural. That's a lie. God said one times one times one is one. There's one Lord, one faith, and the all these three being what? One. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this now. I write yeah. unto you. Watch this, watch this. Listen. Listen what the writer says. You see, sins have been forgiven on the account of this name and this name only. Amen. Remember, there's salvation in no other name. No other name. So if I want my sins forgiven, I got to get with this name. And remember, we're baptized into his name. Amen. And when we're baptized into his name, I put on Christ. I walk in Christ. I fellowship with Christ. I'm buried with Christ. I'm married to Christ. And I rise to walk in the newness of life with Christ. So he says, I, I write, write unto, unto you, you little, little children, children, because your because, sins are woo, forgiven. Woo, watch this. He says, because your sins are because. forgiven. Because. See, only Jesus. Why would you be with someone who can't forgive sin? Why would you be with someone who claims something that you can't open the book, they can't open the book and put their finger on it? All these TV evangelists, quote unquote, Amen. they're always preaching this, that, and the other thing. But none of them would tell you what Paul said. None of them would tell you what Peter said. Amen. Peter said, repent and be baptized. Everyone. Every one of you for Everyone. the remission of your Everyone. sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So why would you have to say accept God in your heart when Peter said repent? Amen. Why would you have to say say this prayer after me when he said you got to be baptized? Y'all all heard him say it. Amen. Sure enough, sure enough. Pluralism. I'm giving you a choice when there are no choices. Case in point. I'm going to kill you. I'm, 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 I'm just going to kill you. But I'm going to give you a choice. Bow and arrow. A 38. Or a bazooka. All of them are designed to kill. <clears throat> I'm not giving you a choice to live. I'm giving you a choice as how you can die. Now, ain't no question about the fact you're going to die. That's understood. I'm just allowing you to choose the weapon of your choice. Bow and arrow, 38, or bazooka. You want a, a little hole or a big old hole? Either hole will kill you. So why settle for something that you have no choice in the matter? Jesus said, if you die in your sin, where I am, you cannot come. Didn't he say it? Believe, you got, you got, you got to understand that, 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 that the question is, when are my sins? He says right here, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. For his name sake. It's because of Jesus your sins are forgiven. He died for your sins. So why would you want to continue to live therein? He died for your sins. That you might die to your sins. Well, 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 when are my sins forgiven? Get for me Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. When are my sins forgiven? Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. The Bible says, Then, then Peter, Peter said unto them, Then Peter, after they asked the question, What must we do to be saved? And then the Bible says, Then Peter said unto them, He says, one, one, repent. All right, got to do it. All right, because Jesus said, I tell you nay, except ye repent. You should all likewise perish. Did he say it? Amen. All right, and then, and then he says, and be, be baptized. baptized. Y'all remember Mark 16, 16. He that believeth, number one, 
and is baptized, number two, shall be saved, number three. Notice God placed salvation after baptism and not before. So if a person came down front and wanted to be saved, why would I extend to him the right hand of fellowship when there is no fellowship? Why would I accept him and, 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 then, and then tell him on the third Sunday, fourth Sunday, or the first Sunday, we're going to baptize you, and then we're going to receive you into our fellowship, and you go home and tell everybody, hey, you joined church today, but you ain't been nowhere near the water. See, I put on Christ in baptism. My sins are washed away in baptism. Amen. I have a new relationship as a result of baptism. In baptism, my sins are washed away. In baptism, God gives me a P-A-S-S -S for my P-A-S-T. In baptism, I marry Christ. In baptism, I died to my sins and I left them all on the shores of the before because I'm now in the after fact. And he performs an operation on me. He cuts off all my sins. And he cast them as far as the east is from the west. He throw them behind his back, never to allow them to stand between he and I again. And then, and then, and then, and then the Bible says, if I rise, if I get up, and then if I get up, I get up for a purpose. I get up for the purpose of walking in the newness of life. And if I remain faithful unto death, the Lord will give me a crown of righteousness that fadeth not away. Why would you choose anything other than Jesus? Because nothing else can save you but Jesus. There's salvation in no other. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name among men under heaven whereby we, what, must be saved. In other words, it's Jesus or nobody. You see, a lot of our actresses and famous people are going to uh, 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 different religious modes because it's convenient to their lifestyle. Scientology is convenient to their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Buddhism is convenient to their lifestyle. In other words, Whatever they choose, Jehovah Witness, is convenient to their lifestyle. And I just named three. And, and I can connect famous people with each of those three. And the point you need to understand, uh, uh, whether you Tom Cruise or, 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 or anybody else in Scientology, if you, if you, if you um, uh, Tina Turner in Buddhism, uh, it, it, it's all contrary to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Why would you be a part of something that God never said anything about? Right. Why would you think God would go to the cross, bleed, suffer, and die if you could get it another way? Mm. Why not just give you a choice and say, if you want this one, call me. How many would call Jesus? But there ain't but one way. If you're here this morning and you're living outside of your God-given privilege to be in that one way, I don't care what you profess to be religiously, there are no hyphenated Christians. No such thing as a Christian anywhere other to because he adds all the saved to the church of the Bible. And if you're not in the church of the Bible this morning, you need to find your way. In just a moment, we're going to stand. We're going to sing the song of invitation. That's your opportunity to come to Jesus. Not Buddha, not Confucius, not, not Muhammad. Come to Jesus. Not John Smith, not Mary Weiss, not somebody else, not your grandmaology, not your papaology, but come to Jesus and Jesus only. In just a few minutes, when we stand to sing the song of invitation, if you're living beneath your God-given privilege and you want to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ today, the water is ready. The clothes are ready. Everything you need is ready to be baptized today. The question is, are you ready? 
to take off the robe of filthiness and put on the robe of righteousness and say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. If you toss to and fro and you haven't dropped anchor with a local congregation and you've just been hitting and missing, God has given you one more chance to get yourself right. God lets you know that you got a responsibility that you must unite with the local congregation and worship God, how? In spirit and in truth. You need to go to work. And if you have not been working this time, while the blood still run warm in your veins to get the work, while God can still see your glory and you can testify about the goodness of God. And if you have not obeyed the gospel, and but someone has shared with you the saving grace of Almighty God and you want to get baptized today, if you're outside viewing on live stream, if you're on YouTube, whatever the case is, our chat box is open. You can just put your information in there. We'll contact you. If you're out of the area, we'll put you in contact with the congregation of the Lord's Church where you can be taught and baptized and added to the body of Christ. If you're here among us this morning, you want to get your life right, there's no better time than right now while we stand and sing the song of invitation. Won't you come? 692. Softly <coughs> and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Yes, sir. Calling for you and for me. Yes, he did. See on the port of he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for <coughs> yes, me. Yes, he is. Come home, come home, are ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. My God is a mighty, mighty good Amen. God. <coughs> God never intended for any of us to be confused about anything. There's no such thing as pluralism in the body of Christ. There's no such thing as multiple religions and religious bodies in the body of Christ. There's no such thing as anything other than the church of the Bible when it comes to salvation. And if you want to be saved, you've got to come to Jesus. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. You got to come to Jesus. If after the message this morning you find that you want to get your life right, you find you want to commit yourself to King Jesus, someone would be here to answer your questions and help you make that commitment possible this day. If you're listening and, and you haven't had time to enter the chat box, you have a question about anything that was said or is taught by the Church of Christ, please make your questions known and we'll follow up with you. At the extended invitation, we find there is one, Sister Doyle, who has something on her heart. Sis? Good morning, family. I would like to thank everyone who prayed for me. My procedure went re very well. And the medication I was on, I had to take it no more. I want to thank y'all. God is the great physician. And, and, and if we just cast our cares on the Lord, leave our troubles there, it don't mean you're not going to have additional troubles. That means you don't have to worry about that one. If you give it to God, let him take it. But don't go looking for it once you give it up. May God bless you. May God keep you. Uh, any others before we have prayer? But Devin? Yeah, uh, basically just pray for my mom's health and my extended family as well, and my regular family as well. Thank you. Brother Devin is asking for prayer for Sister Williamson, <coughs> his mom, that um, her health challenges will be met uh, in due time, and God will deliver her beyond where she is at this point. We just thank God that he's good, and he's been too good to us to leave us all by ourselves. Any others before we close? Anyone outside? If not, <coughs> let's go to God in prayer. Gracious Father God, we're truly thankful for this day, for your love, your grace, and for your mercy, for bringing us thus far, dear God, and blessing us 
and keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger, allowing us to rise this morning clothed in our right mind, knowing which way to go, and that was to come to you. We're so thankful, dear God, for those who have stood as for prayer and recognized the power of prayer in their lives, knowing that you are able to deliver them through procedures and relieve them of medication as well. For those, dear God, who are not in our presence, uh, uh, we ask prayer for them as well. Sister Brown, we pray to God that you continue to bless her. Sister Garrett, uh, we pray to God for her blessings as well, that you continue to shower on them. And brother and sister Wimberly, we pray to God that you continue to bless them in a special way, that you continue to provide for them. We know, dear God, that you are able. We ask a special prayer to God for Sister Hildreth as you continue to bless her as she move and strengthen herself and, and do the things that are on her heart. We know, dear God, that you're able to guide us all. And for every family of the Rock Springs Road congregation that stand in need of prayer with deliverance, if it's a challenging situation, whether it be health, financial, employment, housing, whatever the situation be, we know, dear God, that you are able. Bless them as we stand in your presence this day, calling on your holy and divine name. Keep us as our prayer and our plea. In Jesus' name we say it all. Let every heart say Amen. At this time, brethren, come. <coughs> Let's prepare for communion and for the collection. At this time, our brethren. 557. There is a fountain. There is a fountain filled with flood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And said, the flood beneath that flood flows on the guilty saint. Blows on the guilty saint. Blows on the guilty saint. And said, the spot beneath that spot blows on the guilty saint. Amen. <clears throat> We've come to the next part of our service, which is known as the Lord's Supper. In the book of Acts chapter 20, Reading verse 7 gives us instruction on when this part of the service is supposed to be carried out. As chapter 20, reading verse 7, and it reads, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. In the institution of the Lord's Supper, we're going to read uh, Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 26 down to 29. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 26, and it reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That is the institution of the Lord's Supper. In today's context, we're going to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 down to 30. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, 
Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not descend the lost body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. At this time, the brother on my right is going to pray for the bread. May we bow, please. Father God in heaven, we're so thankful, Father, for your darling son, Jesus, Father, who, who hung on that old rugged cross, Father, for the sins of this world. We ask, Father, that you would bless this bread that represents his work and body. We pray, Father, that you may take of it, Father, with a clean hand and an understanding heart. In Christ's name, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. So let us partake of the bread at this time. The brother on my left is going to pray for the cup. Yeah, my father, we also thank you for the blood that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection. Yes. And we thank you for the uh, opportunity to do this remembrance through the fruit of the vine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We cannot partake of the cup. If everybody has taken the cup, um, this concludes <coughs> the Last Supper. We're going to move to the next part of our service, which is offering a collection. We're going to ask my brother on the left to pray for the collection that we're about to take. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne of mercy and grace that once again. First of all, we recognize you as the God of the Rainbow Covenant, and we thank you for the opportunity to be employed. We thank you for the income that we have, and we thank you for the offering that we have to give back a portion of that you have blessed us with. May what is given be used for the furtherance of the gospel and uh, building up your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So for the collection, um, we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, which reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, I have, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Verse 2, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there will be no gathering when I come. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, and seven, Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six and seven tells us exactly how we should give. Verse six read, but this I say, he will sow sparingly shall reap also <coughs> sparingly, and he will sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Verse seven, every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. The brothers are going to come around. You can also give um, through various means. We have a cash app. You're going to see it on the screen behind me. We also, you can also log onto our website and also give. And you can also send your, your offering to the church address. And it will be accounted for. All to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender I surrender all I surrender, 
I surrender all and all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. We also have an uh, offering from uh, brother, brother and Sister Fraser. Let us pray for what has been collected. <coughs> Heavenly Father, I want to, come, want to thank you for yet another opportunity that you've given us to be able to come together as saints in the Lord's Church and to give you a portion of what you blessed us with. Father, we thank you for what has been collected this day, be it through our various means of giving or in person. Father, we thank you and we continue to ask for your blessings upon the hands that we're able to give today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen and amen. A couple of announcements first before we close out. Um, if you are listening in or you're visiting um, and you're running short or have run out of communion, please call the church building and leave a message, uh, and we'll make sure that you get um, an ample supply of communion. So if you're listening, uh, if you're running low, have run out, uh, there's no reason for you to be without. Just call the church building. And we will make sure that you receive an ample supply of communion and be able to pick up and then go from there. With that said, um, I want to um, recognize our visitors. Uh, we have Steve, is it Garrett? Garrett? All right, Stephen Garrett. Uh, who is visiting with us. He's the guest of Sister Doyle. Uh, we just thank God for you being with us today. And uh, <coughs> please feel free to visit with us at any time. Please don't let this be your last time visiting with us. We encourage those. We don't put anybody on the spot here or anything like that. We, uh, we let you uh, be what you need to be on that Lord's Day. So we'll give you what you need, hopefully. And if you have any questions about anything that is taught or said, please don't leave the building with a question unanswered. We'd be more than happy to address that question. Uh, secondly, uh, we want to encourage those sisters that were part of our fourth Saturday ladies Bible class. Uh, please log on um, and follow the ladies Bible class. That's our way of fellowship. That's our way of our sisters staying in touch one with the other. And we're trying to find out uh, basically where we are now. So please log in, let us know where you are, what you're doing, and, and that type of thing so we can keep track of the membership here at the Rock Springs Road Congregation. And with that said, get ready, get ready, get ready for our Ladies Inspirational Day. It's, it's just, it, you know, time goes so fast, you might as well say it's right around the corner. Uh, last Saturday in August is our Ladies Inspirational uh, Day program. Uh, registration opens up in July. I believe it's July 20th. Uh, registration. We, we encourage everybody to register online. We're going to have a dynamic turnout this year. We're looking for a great time in person. All right. We want to be here at the building as well as uh, those that would be following us um, on live stream. But we need you to respond. We need you to register so we'll know what we're dealing with. And sisters, please make yourself available. Since this is the Rock Springs Road Ladies Inspirational Program, it's the, it, it, it needs to be directed, funded, grouped, and supplied and practiced by the sisters here at the Rock Springs Road Congregation with that invitation to others as well. But we need to be the undergirder of that particular program. So please make yourself available and be a part of that. And we encourage you to be a part of our worship service. We have, we have started... Uh, a new track in our study, and we'll be moving towards uh, some other areas that we're going to encourage you to take a part of. And for those that are visiting with us, again, you indeed are honored guests. We encourage you to be a part of our Bible class every Sunday morning at 930, our worship service every Sunday at 1030, and every Wednesday night live with the Word. In other words, at home with the Word. Every Wednesday night is our live program. It's an interactive uh, Bible study. You can ask questions and get an answer in real time. I believe we are the only one uh, among us 
uh, as a Church of Christ that offers that type of uh, reactive, on-time, online, real-time Bible study. We encourage you to continue our study uh, from uh, the book of Revelation as we address our last church, uh, the last letter at Laodicea. We'll be dealing with that. And we'll be wrapping in some things. What about them? We'll continue our study on them as we go through. So may God continue to bless you and keep you. We just love you. We just thank God for you. And as always, if this ministry has proven to be a blessing to you, we encourage your continued support. Uh, we encourage you to take that link, pass it on to someone else. Let that be your evangelistic effort. Put that link on someone's computer. Put it in their hand. Email it to them. Encourage them to be a part of our online worship. But better yet, invite them to worship service. Uh, there's no reason why we can't be among the living and the saved. So let's do that. Let's continue to bless each other with that. It's good to see Mama Doyle in the house this morning. It's just thank God that he's still blessing us all. And those that have traveled and returned, we just thank God for you. And uh, for the rest of y'all, we just love you anyhow. And those that are blessed with a job, ain't we glad? Ain't we glad? So, and, and so let, let God continue to bless us. If we have no other announcements at this time, uh, you would be standing. Brother Norton's going to give us a song. Take us home. 514, the glory land way. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. And I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saved today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Well, I'm in the glory land, glory land way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Heaven is a narrow and the way grow is clear or oh far. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Let us bow for this message. Our Father and our God, we are grateful to you for the sparing of our lives that we were here, Heavenly Father, to hear such great word, to understand your word, Heavenly Father, that right, we might let it sink deep within our hearts and our minds, that we might go away telling the world that Jesus saves the day. Go with us, Heavenly Father, as we're about to leave this place. Help us to arrive to our destination safe and sound. And Heavenly Father, we plead with you so earnestly to bring us back at the most appointed time on Wednesday nights and on Sundays that we are have another chance to study your word and continue to abide by it. We ask all of these wonderful and rich blessings. In his name, your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, let every heart say, Amen.